Another advantage is the ability to place seed consistently at whatever depth you're looking for. I said in my introduction about first base. That is the ability to plant in moisture and pack soil around the seed and do it in challenging conditions, in rocks, stubble, hard conditions and sticky soils. Agronomists have been telling us for years that seed placement is critical. There's not much point in being able to get through rocks, trash, stubble or whatever if you cannot place the seed consistently in moisture and pack soil around it. One of the nice things about this machine is the ability to change your planting depth and packing pressure on the go from the tractor cab. It's just a flick of the lever with this machine. But with many machines, it involves a toolbox and half a day or a full day, too hard, won't happen. When it's just a flick of the lever, there's no excuse for not planting at the proper depth. And of course, the modules, they float over the soil. If you've got contours, it doesn't matter. It will still maintain that constant depth. Many farmers commented on this and Peter Guarini from Bullfinch in Western Australia explains how easy it is to adjust the planting depth and how accurate it is. The depth control, you can alter it by one sixteenth of an inch at a time and it stays in that position all the time. You go a certain depth and if the paddock's uneven, it does it an even job. Even where it's uneven, it's very good. The packer wheel doesn't go directly over the seating. It, it's got the design is to push the soil just over the furrow so it's loose. And when it's got the German ash, it comes through that much easier yes. than the packer wheels packing the uh, soil where directly over the seeding. If you get a lot of rain and you've got clay country, it's inclined to pack if it goes directly over the, the seed. Look, Pop, he said, I can go 16 kilometres to 18 kilometres and the seeding doesn't alter. But if you try to go faster with the uh, tying air seeders, it scatters the seed everywhere. But with the bullet, it, no matter how high a speed you go, the seeding doesn't alter. It's always a perfect seeding. Just have a look at that crop there and see what differences it's made. You've seen where the tiny air seed is seeded. You can't compare it with the bullet seeding. The press wheel setup is very good. That was one of the major selling points for us. It's so important to get the uh, seed soil contact and to get the air out of the soil around the seed. And with the big 13 inch press wheels, you can, you can push it in so easily. You can put as much pressure or as little pressure as you like. With wheat, barley, which are our main crops, higher pressure is definitely better. You can't really overpress wheat or barley, so getting as much air out of the soil as we can around the seed is, is our key. With canola, you can't press as hard, so we don't want to pack it down too much, but you can just adjust that and back it off, so that's a major selling point. Most machines, you can't adjust your press wheel pressure, so it's a major, major benefit for us. The press wheels obviously can be adjusted from the cab with the hydraulic remote, so it's an on-the-run thing. If you've got red soil or black soil and you want to change it as you're going, it's very simple to change it. You can just adjust it as you're going. Depth of the machine is also adjusted just from the cab. It's uh, Just look at the depth gauge at the back window and it's there, yeah, very simple. And one thing with time machines, you've never been able to really just adjust on the run. You can adjust on the run, but you can't get it consistent. It's with the depth gauge there, you can just, if you're on red soil, which is harder, you won't push any further. You just do it on the run. If you're black soil, which is soft, you can just lift it up. So you just, yeah, very simple to adjust press wheels and, and depth of, of the machine. We do have a, quite a bit of uh, sheet rock uh, towards the surface. That was the reason for going to the disc. And the secret we found with it working so well is the ricochet on the disc and also having the muffler wheel independent of the trip on the disc and it certainly improves seed to soil contact, seed placement and seed coverage. With other machines I've seen around the district can leave the furrow open a bit but this really closes the furrow well and helps out in this very stony conditions. Just, just they're just stress free like it's 
you know, if you want to, if you want to adjust the depth, it's just a flick of the lever, and it's, you know, you can just check it. And the other, the other thing too, I forgot to mention, when you're sowing into soft sandy soils, like you've got soft sand up one end of the field and up the other end, you've got harder red stuff. You can adjust the depth accordingly. Like you just get your mark on your indicator and realise, right, I've got to pull it up to whatever the number is in the sand, and then put it down in the harder stuff. Whereas I know competitors' machines, you just can't do that. It's a big job to change the depth, but with the Tobin, it's just simple. It's just that that was the big key for us was just the simplicity of it, just being able to adjust the depth and not be spending much time. Like no one wants to be out at a machine with spanners adjusting depth or even getting out to adjust depth. Like that depth adjustment on the go was a big sell for us. We planted just over 8,000 acres. In probably the same time, we were saying about half that area with a tine machine for the same amount of time, if, if you know what I mean. We dry sowed some chickpeas. Uh, the farmer wanted them down, sort of down quite a depth to protect it from um, the chemicals he was putting on post sowing, like balance. And uh, the machine had no problems doing that at all. He was more than happy with the job it did. And, and since then the chickpeas have come up and, and he's more than happy with the, the germination. Uh, there's no chemical damage or anything like that. No, no chemical got washed down in amongst the seed. That's what he was, what he was worried about. Why he wanted them a bit deeper, and it was dry when we did that too. We didn't have the luxury of moisture on that job, but we were still able to get them down deep enough. Yeah, we use Treflan, a lot of Treflan here at home on our conventional canola, a um, pre-emergent. We just sprayed that out in front, and then I oh, sowed anywhere between two and probably six hours afterwards, or even a day, up to a day. Now that the crop's up and established, we're very happy with the results of the incorporation um, to the point where we'll probably use a lot more Treflan next year. Um, we were a bit sort of dubious about using Treflan with going to the disc with the lack of incorporation, but um, after seeing the results, it's, it's done a really good job, um, especially at speed. We went a little bit quicker. We sowed our canola at about sort of between 16 and 18 k's most of the time just to get that little bit more soil throw. And I think that's worked. It's just, there's been good coverage on the treff land and it's done a good job on the ryegrass. Yes, well, we felt we could do it, apart from just saving moisture, we could uh, get all the soils to uh, germinate, particularly the chocolate soil, which we have major problems with because we mix up dry with wet soils. The red soil is fine, the black soil is fine, but the chocolate soil doesn't seem to germinate well after a sowing with the old machine. Fantastic the sowing of the chocolate soil with the disc planter because it didn't mix up the wet and the dry soil. It uh, all came up just beautiful. Yeah, very happy. Yes, well, where the seed was placed, it made it very easy for it to come up. It wasn't smearing the soil with the press wheel and it came up very easily on all the soils we have, the sin and the red and the chocolate and the black flood plain. Yeah, the seed came up very well. This is a very good example of the muffler wheel in action in compacted soils. These soils here, as you can see, is a bit of pasture in it. They're very good for rejuvenating pasture. As the soil comes off the disc, the muffler wheel crunches it back down, and in effect you get very, very little disturbance. This is also the case with hard setting soils, compacted soils. The soil tends to chip away in a lump and you need these muffler wheels. Also good in long fallow which can also have root structure. Uh, as you can see from this footage we're not getting that much disturbance and hence if the soil does get away at all from the seed zone or from the trench you're going to have trouble covering it over with the press wheel. So just checking the, the seed placement as we saw there there's very little disturbance you can hardly see where it's been, in fact, and that's due to the muffler wheel, even though it was breaking away in clods. You can see that it's packed it back very well, and also, of course, the press wheel has come along after the muffler wheel and made sure we got good seed to soil contact. Uh, we just have a look for the seeds here. We can see they're pretty well down at the bottom of the trench. There's a few. Now, I've got a fairly heavy rate there. I think I've got about 120 kilos per hectare. It's heavier than anyone is likely to put on. Uh, combined product you may, but just for seed, of course. That's a very heavy rate. I've done that so that it's easy to find. Just pull away a bit of soil. Here we go, another mate. So there's plenty of them down there, and they're all about the same depth. And once again, you can see the soil is pretty friable around them. That's 
due to the muffler wheel crunching the soil back down and getting good seat to soil contact. Here's another mate, another one. Plenty of them there. You can see there there is a bit of structure with the soil, there's a bit of root coverage. And don't forget this was planted at speed at 20 or 15, 20 k's and you still get some very good seed placement down there. It's very important when you're setting up, forget about speed. At the beginning, plant at 10 k's, conventional. Make sure you're getting good seed placement. As soon as you learn how to operate the machine, you're happy with your inch and a half or whatever you're planting with. When you're happy with that, then you can experiment with the seed. I would expect that nobody in their first year will be planting at over 20 k's. In fact, 15 k's, you'd be doing very well if you get up to that in your first year. In your second year, you should basically be planting about the same speed that you're spraying at. That's provided there are not too many rocks. So 40 millimeters is a fairly typical depth. Don't be afraid to take the tape out and check it. Very important, constant depth. See there, he's got plenty of mates down at that depth. Looks pretty good. Looks like a nice clean job, friable soils, and we should have a very good germination.